What's happening, everybody? Mizzou moving their game, uh, spring game indoors. Florida season opener gets moved. Jalen Carter disappoints at his pro day. Day one of the tournament gets underway, and Chris Marler stops by to hit on all this. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, we're going to jump into this. We would normally go around the conference, but we're going to go around the conference with a friend today. Our buddy Chris Marler from the uh, College Football Uncensored podcast jumping in with us. Marler, long time no see, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah, it's been way too long. It's been way too long. Now the season's over for football. Um, I've been trying to learn what basketball is, which has been fun. <laughs> oh, wait till segment three today. We're going to make you make some picks for the uh, SEC teams today. So, um, cool. yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how much you know. All right, let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws. 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 Around the conference. And let's start here, Marler. The big news that came out yesterday, University of Missouri's football spring game was scheduled for this Saturday at 11 a.m. They're going to move it indoors, and it will now be closed to the public due to space limitations. Saturday's forecast in Como is calling for morning lows in the 20s and strong winds and wind chill factor in the teens. Missouri fans, they're going to have to wait to see what this Missouri team is going to look like. Uh, look, Drinkwood said a few weeks ago he likes getting in spring practice before spring break to limit injuries, but this just seems kind of silly. It's cold as hell, and your fans don't get to see what your football team looks like. Yeah, there's like there's some like Big Ten hardo somewhere like on Twitter that's just like, y'all won't come up to Columbus or Ann Arbor in November. And you can't even play your spring game in the cold. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I would have watched this game for one reason, one reason only, and that's Luther Burden. Like, I don't, I don't really care about any other part. Like, you know, I, I, I think there were so many missed opportunities in that offense last year where they could have got that kid more involved and they didn't. Um, you saw it in the first game. He had like, you know, he was the whole highlight in game one, but he only had like three catches for like 39 yards or something like that. Um, that's really my only question with Mizzou. Like, like I mean, there are definite question marks. That's the only like intriguing question I feel like I would even have for this team. Also, was that was that Drinkwitz in the picture? Oh yeah, he's wearing a a sun hat for those of you. Did he watching. woke up? <laughs> like, did Drinkwitz get like like he looks like Bonds coming in off the off season. Like you only get like a two month off season. Like how did he? He must have been using the cream in the clear. Yeah, well, look, this is year four for him, and I know he got an extension, but like, doesn't yeah. it feel like if he underachieves this year that he's, you know, hot seat conversation starts to heat up? What was going to be fun with with them is that Brady Cook is hurt. He he had off season surgery, so Jake Garcia, the transfer from Miami, was going to be the quarterback that right. everybody wanted to see. Sam Horn on the baseball team, he strained his arm, so like right. everybody wanted to see Jake Garcia. Theo Weiss, the wide receiver from Oklahoma, came over, but. Um, uh, according to Missouri, they said due to space limitations indoors, the practice will only be open to parents, former players, recruits, and the media. So, again, uh -huh. everybody but fans get to be in this and watch the spring. Game. I just like Drinkwitz. Like, then do then start spring practice after spring break. Then like, see, that is what I didn't get. Like the fact that they're playing a spring game Saturday is kind of absurd. Like, like i'm not saying this is what's happening because i don't think it is also i just want to you know the last time that, that i was speaking you were speaking my phone apparently is picking up whatever we're saying <laughs> and it's just typing out an entire text to my ex right now which is just fantastic theater um just great so i want you back <laughs> that's all stop saying it stop saying it um i was wrong um no so i i think that like like the stuff with him doing it this saturday that seems a little bit odd to me at least is like you're you're do you want people to see it because you're directly going up with with March Madness and yeah. Mizzou's in like I mean like they're you know they're a good team I don't know how they're 17 we'll get to that later but I mean like I just I was kind of surprised with that and because it is super super early and it's not like Mizzou is a place it's, it's not Florida where you know you're gonna right. have like 
here's what the, the weather is most likely going to be. It might be cool. And it's like 68 or like, you know, like high or like low seventies, something like that. Like, I mean, Como is not a very, like, I mean, Como reminds me of like a lot of big 10 places. It seems like there's always a perpetual fog and grayness to it. It's like <laughs> London. It's like, like every time I see it, it's like, Oh cool. It's 38 degrees and raining again in Como. Awesome. Well, Drinkwitz did say like the the soft tissue injuries were an issue, and mm -hmm. so that's why I was like, well, we want to get it all out of the way before spring, uh, yeah. spring break. I'm like, come in and do it all after spring break. Uh, one other note on Missouri: they said Luther Burden, they're going to move him to the slot where he'll see more targets. So again, just makes sense. Maybe not a prototypical slot receiver, but right. he'll, uh, he'll catch a lot of balls. I don't. That's but like real quick on that. Like, if he is your guy, and he is. He is the he's the best player on that team. He's the most athletically gifted and and like best high strength recruit, all the above on that team. I don't care if you line him up at left tackle. He should be having like the most like targets. Like it makes no sense. So yeah, he had games where it was like two carries and two catches. I'm like, what are we doing? This yeah. is the best player. Um, switching gears, Florida. Their season opener against Utah was just announced. It is going to be moved to Thursday night. So Thursday, August 31st. We will see Florida at Utah in Saturday week one of the college football season later this year. No time yet for the game or TV assignment, but you got to think, I mean, like this might, this could be a late night game. Like it could be like 8 PM central nine Eastern if they're going to play it out in Utah and a big game right out of the gates for Billy Napier. I love it. It's, I, I think it's great. I think like what it does for Florida, whether they, they want this to happen or not is that you're going to have the entire eyes of the nation are going to be on you, right? Like, like, I think that you're going to have a, a night to yourself pretty much. Like that'll probably be the first night of football. I know there's probably some week zero games and stuff like that, but at the same time, like that is the marquee matchup. Yeah. Right. But like, this is the mark. This has to be the marquee matchup. I would think at least of that Thursday. Um, like I'm assuming it's on Fox cause it's going to be a pac 12 game. So you, you do have, you do run the, the risk of it being like a 10 o'clock start. I don't think there's another game that would be on. So I think you'll still like see it in, you know, like the primetime slot for, for East coast where it's going to be in the eight, 8 PM slot, but this could be a good thing and a bad thing for Billy Napier. Because when you talk about like a team that has a lot to prove and like, man, what does that team a, a year ago look like if they don't win that game against Utah and like, and two teams that went trending in very opposite directions throughout the season. Oh, that's a concern, man. Cause like that, that could be a great first night. Like it was last year when you had everyone see Anthony Richardson on, on display for the first time. And, and that whatever, triple axle that he pulled off um, in, in the backfield. But if you don't, it, you know, I, Utah's going to be a good team. This could be a, a, a night of embarrassment too, if it goes wrong. Yeah. And Cam rising, by the way, he had off season surgery. So they are saying he should be ready by the start of uh fall ball, but we'll see. That's kind of up in the air yeah. uh, real quick. Go on the record right now in, in mid March, Graham Mertz in that game over under two twenty passing over under 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 <laughs> Graham, Graham, <laughs> Graham, remember when Graham Mertz was a Heisman, a Heisman contender for like in like week two of 2020. And it was like, yeah, yeah. like, I'll never forget his stat line. I was like, dude, Graham Mertz, like, like, cause that was the year that ESPN, they were, they were chopping up games. Like it was like, they're not playing this week. They're, they were playing once every three weeks. That's all, all they were doing. And, and then there was like, like his numbers, I think he had like four touchdowns. And one, they're like, dude, Graham Mertz could win the Heisman. And Wisconsin was like constantly ranked fifth in the F. They were like two and eight or so two. And I was looking up his game logs last year and I was like 170 here, 180 there. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what is Florida? Like, what is Florida? Go like, the, it, they're going to miss as, as much as they griped about Anthony Richardson. You're going to look back on the glory days of Anthony Richardson here real soon right, in Florida. Right. One uh, hiring note for Florida, Billy Napier bringing back a familiar face, a longtime Dan Mullen assistant, Billy Gonzalez, is coming back. Uh, he was on the staff at Florida under Mullen. Uh, he, prior to Florida, he was at uh, with Mullen at Mississippi State from 2013 and 2017, and he also served, uh, served as wide receivers coach at Florida under Urban Meyer from 05 to 09. Marler, is the SEC like cheers where everybody knows your name and it's the same cast for 11 seasons? Because Mike Bobo, Kevin Steele, Will Muschamp, Billy Gonzalez, it's just this group of guys in the SEC that just never go away. They just all just keep moving around. It is, I've made this joke a thousand times, but at some point, the A or college football is going to have to institute what they should have done in Congress years ago, and that is term limits. And you're going to have to, like, you cannot have – 
I mean, like these guys are all Lindsey Graham. This is the 28th season. Like, like, where is the guy from? Uh, where's John Chavis? Like, like the fact that he doesn't have a job <laughs> this time. Like, you know what I mean? Th those guys have it. Like, the fact that Muschamp and Bobo are just they are they are coordinators at the back to back defending national champion um, in that program right now that is just i mean kirby's commitment like never wanting to get out of the year 2007 listen i love fallout boy too and and i wish they would come back but like you know it's, it's also time to move on a little bit maybe emo's dead i don't know maybe it was a phase mom maybe it's not maybe it was a phase hey i look forward to uh todd grantham coming back next year as like south carolina's dc or something yeah. you know that's coming <laughs> Uh, one more note in this segment, LSU, they're going to have a marquee matchup to open next season with Southern Cal. It yeah. will be in Las Vegas. It will be Sunday, September 1st. Uh, it's the day before Labor Day. Now, they officially announced this. LSU just tw tweeted this out yesterday. They said it's going to be a 6.30 Central game. Now, Marla, correct me if I'm wrong, but with Daylight Savings Time, it's two-hour difference then, so that means it's a 4.30 afternoon game, Las Vegas time, on ABC. This is great news for LSU fans because this gives them all night, Sunday night before Labor Day, to go party and drink after they win. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, because you know, you know how LSU fans, if it didn't get that extra hour of sleep, they definitely wouldn't have done that, especially in Vegas. Like, I think they would have really controlled themselves if they didn't get the extra hour of sleep. So it was nice of them to move this game. Like, 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 listen, LSU fans, I want you to listen up right now. One, Gordy, I love that you had to use a picker, picture of of, um, of Brian Kelly at the Bama game. I saw that. I noticed it. Um, two, yeah. Two, um, you guys drink Nashville dry, which is tough to do. Well, they, they've drank they've drank a lot of cities dry. I mean, now it's time to do Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas won't know what hit them. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a storm coming. Um, no, I I think that'll be that that game. I love that game for LSU already, and I don't know what LSU is going to have coming oh. back next year. But I mean, the fact that USC is going to lose a lot, especially with Caleb Williams being gone after next season, that's well, a great that's a great spot. Whoever it's going to be, it's going to be another Heisman favorite because that's all Lincoln mm -hmm. Riley does is cranks out Heisman winners. But I'm going to go the other way. This is 2024 when we're going to the nine conference games. Mm -hmm. LSU is going to open with USC and maybe pick up Texas and Oklahoma on the schedule. Whatever LSU's win total is for 2024, give me the under. Well, didn't they get UCLA? I'm pretty sure. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think they also got UCLA in that one. Like, I, well, this is a text from one of my good buddies, Mickey Sherry, was telling us earlier. He's like, we already play such and such, and I think it was a Pac-12 school. Yeah, they're going to move that one because that's yeah, they have the to. way. Yeah, I mean, um, look. You got to play somebody. Like you got to get easy wins somewhere. So like the Citadel or ULL, Louisiana Bama. Monroe. So, well, yeah, maybe Bama. All right. Uh, more with Chris Marler here in just a second. We'll continue our conversation going on around the conference. But first, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. We are uh, into the backstretch of the NBA season, and that means you need to go check out FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. It's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to points scored, three-pointers drained. Look, we're also into college basketball hoops tournament. You want to get in on the action. FanDuel, they let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your first bet, of no sweat first bet, up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, roll on here, Locked On SEC. I want to remind you guys, grab your bracket and go listen to the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown with national analysis and insights from local experts. Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown for, has everything you need to make the most informed decisions on your bracket, bracket. Find the episode on Locked On College Basketball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Continuing our conversation with our buddy Chris Marler from the College Football Uncensored Podcast. Marler, continue to hit on some of the big stories going on around the SEC. And we got to get into this one. Big news that came out on Wednesday. Georgia held their pro day to give scouts a look at their talent. Yalen Carter, first off, early on Wednesday, announces he, is not, he, he would only do position drills, 
No yeah. 40 yard dash, no other testing. He weighed in at 323 pounds, up nine pounds from the combine, which was a long time ago, right? I mean, like a, a week, two weeks ago, a week like, and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this is this is like me when I was on my Golden Corral bit and going there every other day. But <laughs> every like, other day, well, you know, it was it was a rough time. Jalen yeah. Carter, he dealt with cramping muscles and heavy breathing again, like me at Golden Corral, right? That caused him to not finish his position drills. Like, what is he doing? What, like, and then they said he didn't even stick around to talk to the media or comment on his performance. Like. Dude, you just shot yourself in the foot these last couple of weeks. Yeah. I one, I'm just so sidetracked now because I miss Golden Crow. I've been a Golden Crow in years. Um Ryan but, Steakhouse, also a good one. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um you, well, you weren't out in LA for that national championship speaking of Georgia, but there's like a sizzler like right, right across the street of the forum, which is just an incredible location. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, I saw this today and and like I was very surprised like even like like two steps after this specific drill he pulled up and was just like it wasn't it wasn't a great look here's the thing jalen carter it is march 15th right it's march 15th of 2023 jalen carter is going to be in shape when it comes time for the season when it comes time for mini camp and all that kind of stuff this all of this is a bad look like especially i mean like I don't know who is in charge of, of like PR or like his like publicity or, or like just like, you know, his his public persona like took a pretty big shot when he had to leave the combine to go get arrested. And not one person was like, hey, bro, maybe change your shirt. Right. Maybe change your shirt. <laughs> like like and he just took the took the mug shot. I mean, like that was that was kind of mind blowing. It continues to kind of like I don't say spiral is not the right word, but he's he's fallen out of the top 12. Um, like when you look at Todd McShay, I, I pray that today's on-field performance drops him down to eight as a, as an Atlanta Falcons fan that grew up here, like in Atlanta, like I, I pray that's what happens because Jalen Carter is still, in my opinion, probably the most can't miss prospect of this draft. It, you know, I, I think I th like it's, there's one, there's a quote that somebody told me last week that I think is so like profound as simple as it is. And it's like two things can be true at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, they, like you can have mutually exclusive true things. Is his stock plummeting a little bit? Sure, sure. Say it's plummeting. Um, is he still going to be a very good pro? Absolutely. And and it, it was a bad look today, um, but I think he'll be fine. And and I, I I will say I think that there's a lot of Georgia fans on Twitter that owe Todd McShay an apology. Well, and, and there were there were all these things about character issues coming out with him, mm -hmm. and and like I don't know, we didn't really hear of anything other than. The night of the fatal crash, look, he's racing, and it's it's stupid. People driving drunk, and they never said if he was drunk. But look, if he's going to leave the scene of a crash with his friends involved, right. you got to assume he's drunk and thinking, I got to get out of here. Whatever. I'm, I'm right. totally just assuming here that's what right. happened, but whatever. That said, it's a bad decision that night. Am I supposed to leapfrog and go, man, Jalen Carter just makes bad decisions left and right? Like, right. no, that was a one-time thing, and it was a terrible right. decision. But here's a case of you clearly didn't take care of what you needed to do leading up to the biggest job interview in your life. Yeah. So now that, to me, is a red flag. All the I other stuff aside. Agree. No, I completely agree with that part. And I do think, like, the character issues, like, when that first came out, like, I mean, there were Georgia fans that were like, and again, this is Twitter. This is not real life. This is, this is like what like some people were saying is, like, you know, he should sue. Todd McShay because he could have cost him millions of dollars. Well, I'll tell you what, man, like, like one Todd McShay is not going to go out there and float something like that. Like it was like, it was his idea. Like, like it wasn't told to him from like a GM or a front office or whatever. And a lot of times you see this every single year, like it's smoke screens and, and, and front offices saying like, Oh yeah, we're, we're not sure about that guy because you know, he, he might be a red flag. And you're like, or there's like red flags and there's, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's, we're hearing this and it's like hoping he'll drop. Right. That could be the case. But the whole time, like when you had everything in front of you that you were in control of and you didn't take care of that, that is kind of bizarre. Like that, that does show a little bit of a lack of care and kind of a lack of care. I'm assuming, unless he's just been like depressed about all the stuff that's happened, that's coming to light. Like, I, I don't know where his headspace is, but again, biggest interview. I mean, like he, he is costing himself potentially millions of dollars. 
Let's uh, let's get into a couple of rapid fire Georgia questions. Stetson Bennett did look good on his pro day. Made some nice throws. A corner reports showed he could make throws on the run. Highlighted his arm strength. Threw about fifty five passes. Where do you think Stetson gets drafted? I mean, probably the Army. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm just glad he graduated finally. Uh, no, I, I think I think that like I, I just he's a better athlete than I think he showed in that forty. I think I felt like he was jogging at parts of that. You saw him be able to run away and get away, not just from like, you know, defensive linemen and, and linebackers, but also defensive backs like several times in his career. He's just like, I hate to use this phrase because he's white, but like he's a sneaky good athlete. It's, you know, you'll hear that leading up to it. I, I think he, like, I think he's like a, a, a probably a day three guy, but I would be shocked if, if he drops like to round seven or is undrafted. Right. Like, look, we're hearing a lot of people saying, right? Like, I, I think like, I don't know what the value of all those things are, like if it's round four or five, but a backup quarterback, he would be, I think he would be really good at that. I, like, you know, if he gets in the right system and he, like, he, he cannot go to like the Colts or the Falcons, right. like he needs to be in a place where it has a good offensive line. That's not gonna have a huge drop off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think he, I think he could be a pro man. Like he's got, he's got the arm talent. Um, and we're in a league where Josh or, uh, Kyle Allen just got a job again. Sam Darnold, Andy Dalton, like Stetson Bennett could play in the NFL. For all those guys, yeah. Baker Mayfield's out. replacing Tom Brady. Yeah, well, <laughs> replacing. Let's use that yeah. lightly. All right, another Georgia note. They started their spring practice. Kirby spoke with the media, and he was asked about the quarterbacks. He said Carson Beck and Brock Vandergriff are going to split reps with the first team, and then said, "Whoa, well, whoa, well, now, no, don't don't count out Gunnar Stockton." Right. Who, who do you think ultimately wins out this battle? I tell you what, I think one of the things that's super, super interesting about this is um, I I think Gunnar Stockton is going to be a bigger uh, factor than people think. Um, and that's a former five star and a lot of a lot of like publications. I think he ended up a four star composite two four seven or whatever. Brock Vandergriff, I think, is the most physically talented quarterback in that room. If you look at Vegas, Vegas has these lines out for the Heisman. Right. And it says for Georgia. Carson Beck was like plus 4,000 on like four or FanDuel or DraftKings like last week. Brock Vandergriff was plus 1,800. And I was like, that's really weird because Carson Beck, Carson Beck's on the graphic for the spring game. I mean, you know, like, like I think a lot of people expect him to be the guy. I expect him to be the guy. I don't think Gunnar Stock or I don't think Bro, uh, Brock Vandergriff stays at Georgia after, after like spring camp. Um, I, I think good. he's super talented. I think he'll be gone. I wouldn't be shocked if he's at Auburn. I'll, I'll throw that out there as well. Um, that's but okay. I do think, I do think that like, there's. I mean, I've, I've talked to people that are close over there, like you know Graham Coffee and a couple other guys that like work, you know, strictly covering Georgia, and, and they think it's going to go into the season. Um, I think it's Carson Beck's job to lose. I think that I mean, like Kirby has just been flexing his, you know what, like to like to the entire country. Like I just won with like a lacrosse team at receiver position, and then and then st like Stetson Bennett at quarterback. Like I can win with Carson Beck and he's been in the program for like, this is his fourth year. Like I know we've got a new OC, but he gets it. And so I think, I think it's his blues. Dominic Lovett and Robert Thomas coming over. Now you got real yeah. receivers to catch the ball. Right. Uh, one more for this segment. Uh, Bama starts their spring ball next week. Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, Eli Holstein, Din Dylan Lonergan. Who wins that job in your mind right now? I think it's Ty Simpson. I think they're going to have a. I think they're going to have a package for Jalen Milrow because he's too good of an athlete to keep off the field. I don't think they move him to receiver. But I tell you what, everybody that has sat here, I've I've said this for for a while now that I think there's going to be some like some natural drop off in talent when you like you go from Jalen Hurts to Tua to Mac Jones to Bryce Young, who I think is the best quarterback that they've had in program history. You're going to have some some sort of natural drop off because he's not a, like he could be the number one overall pick. They don't have a number one overall draft pick as far as I, I know now in that quarterback room, but you see some of the disrespect that's going around about Bama, like Bama quarterbacks, like not even in the top five, like in, in the conference and some of these rankings and, and from like, you know, uh, from like some pundits, Ty Simpson's a five-star that you got the, the kids behind him are five stars. Jim little was a high four-star that has like, he's the fastest player on the team. If he improves the passer, I, I just think that quarterback room is better than people think. And I think there's a reason why, when you when you had guys that like you know the kid that came out of Wake and then um, uh, Devin Leary, the kid from NC State, I, I have a hard time believing that Bama struck out on all those guys and and wasn't 
like I don't think the panic mode was in like what's going on with Nick Saban. I think he's fine with who he has at quarterback. He's Chris Marler. One more quick segment right after this. We're gonna make some NCAA picks. <laughs> All right, final segment here on Locked On SEC. And Marler, day one of the tournament is today. Eight teams made it. Mississippi State, they're already out. They lost in the uh, first four the other night. But first up today, it is seven seed Mizzou against 10 seed Utah State. Who are you taking? Mizzou, man. But Mizzou is a seven seed is a joke. At 25 wins I, or 24 wins, I hate that. Um, I, I, I like Mizzou. I, I, I tell you what, though, there's a lot of people that are high on Utah State. <laughs> Like there's yeah. like, like that's a tough that's not like both seven seeds in the SEC got pretty tough draws for five dollars. Who was Mizzou's head coach? Oh, he was a uh, assistant coach at Florida State, and he <laughs> so, screw you, dude. <laughs> Frank Heath, Dennis Gates, Dennis Gates. Shout I, out knew Dennis. Was, I knew it was something had had. I knew it had something to do with it was like a mix between the guy from National Treasure and then also uh, that old frumpy coach that was uh, for the Arizona Cardinals who, who they were who they thought they were <laughs> uh, later Thursday it is one seed Alabama against 16 seed A&M Corpus Christi Bama should not, not struggle with them but how far do you think Bama goes I've got them winning it all I have them losing the elite eight to Arizona right. it is a I, I, admittedly it's a massive hedge yeah I think Probably. Alabama could win it all I just I, Arizona's good and I just I, I just I, somebody was brought this up earlier today. I think Bama, Bama has – there's a lot that's around the program and all that kind of stuff, and I understand, like, the the feeling it, 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 like, elicits from, like, people not just with the program, but outside the program and all over the country. Like, not everyone's big into college basketball, but everyone's big into the tournament. And I think there's a, a level of pressure that's going to come on Bama that's, like, going to be kind of difficult for them to overcome in terms of, like, like, everyone is going to be pulling against you. Everyone's going to be watching you. Yeah, I think Bama doesn't lose a game as long as Brandon Miller shows up. But there is a chance he doesn't show up. He may, may have to bring a gun to somebody else. Uh, later wow. in Thursday evening, wow. it is like that. Nine seed Auburn against eight seed Iowa. Auburn has lost nine of their last 13 games. They were one and done in the SEC tournament. I just don't believe in this Auburn team at all. They do get to play in Birmingham, so they're going to have some yeah. fans there. And I like Bruce Pearl, but I just don't like this particular Auburn team. I don't either, I, but I, I will say I think they beat Iowa. The Big Ten's not a great conference this year. I know they got eight teams in, but they're just not. I mean, like, I mean, you saw, you saw like the biggest snub that people were talking about the other day with Rutgers, and Rutgers gets you know gets beat by Hofstra in round one of the NIT. Um, I don't like this Auburn team either. I don't, I, but like at the same time, I love the coach, I love the backcourt, I love, I love the like. The extra guys that they have, like the bench and role players and stuff like that, like Katie Johnson, I it's so frustrating if you're a rival fan. But like those kind of guys, and I think especially with the experience, <coughs> excuse me, in the backcourt with like Wendell Green, I think that's a team if they if they lost in the first round, I wouldn't be surprised. If they were able to advance to the Sweet 16 and beat Houston in round two, I also wouldn't be surprised, especially if Sasser's hurt. Yeah, and and you're in Birmingham. You're gonna have a yeah. lot of awesome fans. Uh, later tonight, four C Tennessee hosts thirteen C Louisiana. I think the Vols win this one, but I don't think they go much further. Not having Zakai Ziegler, I'm not buying into Tennessee going deep. I'm just gonna go ahead and be very honest with here because I know that you have. A, I'm sure you have a lot of Tennessee listeners and, and and probably some that have interacted with me on Twitter before. I hate Tennessee Twitter. I hate Vol Twitter. It's the worst. It's the absolute worst. That being said, they've said horrific things to me. They said horrific things about my mom. <laughs> I will still pull for Tennessee over Duke in round two. I, I hope they get to the Sweet 16. But you're right. It, there's a lot to overcome. But I tell you what, you know what would be an awesome story? Is like it's, it's Despite what I just said, Rick Barnes, with Zakai Ziegler being out, Rick Barnes finally putting the pieces together and making a run in March with this team, I think would be an awesome, awesome story. Last one, Marler. <laughs> Late tonight, it is seven seed Texas A&M gets ten seed Penn State. I thought like A&M had a seven seed is stupid. They were the second best team in the SEC West all year long. They beat Bama like they they had an awesome year. But you know what they were doing? The committee was trying to get them Aggies Longhorns in round two, mm -hmm. and that's what it sets up for. They play ten seed Penn State. Marty Smith is predicting the Aggies to the Final Four. What do you think? I, of don't, I tell you what, man. Um, now you're in my head after you brought up the Dennis Gates thing. Um, but what's his name? Wade. Uh, Wade fourth. Taylor. Wade Taylor the fourth. Um, Tyrese Radford. What's that? 
Tyrese Radford. Yeah, um, but like, but that kid, especially that kid, he has shown up in big games. He has shown up in big games. I would not at all be surprised if they could make a run like that. The committee, I, I get what they were trying to do. You're right, but they could have done a better job with it. I mean, they, they could have like tried to set it up towards like, I mean, like they were a 25 win team in a league that got eight teams in the in like the in the tournament. And also, like you look at their resume, I understand that they're they're you know like they're pre like preseason not the right way to put it, obviously, but they're like non conference record. This guy, um, Buzz Williams, Buzz man. Williams. <laughs> he just looks like he, he he looks like a toe that's just been shoved into like what like if you if you photoshop like someone's thumb. Onto like somebody at a 1920s baseball game. That's exactly what Buzz Williams looks like. To no me. one wears vests anymore, bro. No, besides magicians. <laughs> I had to wear one at Houston's when I was bartending. They made me squeeze into like a size 38. I was a size 46 chest. And I was like, this is I, like my, my tits are popping out, guys. Um, <laughs> excuse my language. But like, no, I, I was, I was like, I, I do think that going like 15 and three in conference in, in like one of the toughest conferences, probably the second toughest conference in the SEC. That should speak for itself. And it was crazy. Like, like the committee was like an ex-girlfriend. It's like, well, I'm not, I didn't forget about the past. It was like, well, that was like four years ago. Okay. Yeah, and it was like, the one of the guys said, oh, they had, they played a bad non-conference. Okay. But they played a great conference. So right. Like and they were, they were legitimately the, they beat Bama a week ago. Right. Like a week ago. And they beat him like, you know, like pretty well. It was like, I, I understand it was at home, but my God. All right. There you have it. Those are our picks. Marler, thanks for uh, jumping on with us. We'll, uh, we'll do this again real soon. Sounds good, man. All right, here's Chris Marler of the College Football Uncensored podcast. I'll be making an appearance on his podcast this week, so make sure you uh, check that out. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Now go make sure you check out our uh, other brand new podcast, the Locked on College Basketball Podcast. Everything you need to know about college hoops all in one place. Here from some big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked on College Basketball available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks again to Chris Marler. This has been Locked on SEC.